Hello everybody, prime example of Murphy's Law here, because as you can see, this is a voiceover. I do not actually have any audio for this video. What happened to the audio? I don't know, it's gone. So we are trying to do it like this for the first time ever. But if you think about it, Coach Greg is always complaining about how he films videos and just doesn't have any sound, so he's forced to re-record. So you could see this as a tribute to Greg, which could be seen as evidence for my 6 billion IQ, as opposed to an example of why my brain is the size of a peanut and more smooth than the finest silk known to man. So the recipe that I will be making today is the Mega Peach French Toast Bake, which is stated in the cookbook to quite possibly be Coach Greg's favorite recipe in the entire thing. Thing. He also recommended personally that I make it in the video that he made about me. Anabolic apple pie breakfast bake. French toast. How does that not sound like one of the most delicious things you've ever eaten? It is one of the most delicious things I've ever made. And the nectarine bake one, it's even better. So I'm pretty excited to get into this. Now, losing all the audio in my video is not the only way I am paying tribute to Coach Greg. No, if you look closely, you can see that I am wearing a Stringer tank top. And if you look even closer than that, you will see that it is a UFC gym tank top. So that allows me to pay tribute to Greg, since that's what he wears in his videos, and stay on brand with the fighting. Okay, so for this recipe, you're only going to need five ingredients, one of which being half a slice of regular ass bread. Now, I am out of regular ass white bread. However, I have regular ass brown bread, which is fine. I have used it in recipes before. It tastes just as good. It's just a little bit more dense versus a little bit more fluffy on the regular ass white bread side, but that's okay. It actually has 10 calories less per slice than the white bread, so we are going with this one. Okay, so the next ingredient you'll need for this recipe is eight bags of sweetener. I am going with no name brand. Now I know eight bags of sweetener seems excessive, but hey, I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Exactly one grain of ground cinnamon. No more, no less. Gotta make sure you're accurate for the recipe to work. Now for the egg whites, obviously. We need three grams on the dot. Remember, gotta be accurate with these recipes. And finally, vanilla extract. We're going to need six bottles of this stuff. I am using Madagascar vanilla. Actually, not finally. We still need the star of the show, that being peaches. Fresh or frozen, it doesn't matter. You're going to need half of one. Now, with the ingredients list out of the way, the only thing left to do is to put everything in a bowl, whisk it all up, and that'll be that. I shall cut to when I am finished doing that. All right. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to pick up the bowl now and show you guys what this all looks like. Just give me a sec to adjust the camera because you can barely see and I'm not spilling anything today. There we go. That's what it looks like. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. There is no way that those gram measurements add up to what I am showing you in that bowl. Well, you'd be surprised. Like, I'm telling you, that's just the three grams of egg whites. You'd be surprised at how little volume eight whole bags of sweetener is and... Well, I mean, six bottles of vanilla extract isn't really that much. Most of that is the three grams of egg whites. I promise you that. Now, I decided to leave this next part in because it shows off my back in natural lighting, and I think my back is one of my better features. Greg, what do you think? I think it's a pretty decent back, but while I have you, Greg, I'd just like to ask what kind of technological curse you used your HRT to put on me, because not only have I lost all the audio in this footage, I have lost all the footage of me eating the thing for the first time, and uh, my microphone doesn't work, so I just have to keep plugging it and unplugging it, hoping it'll work so I can record this footage, and today, when I woke up, I found my laptop had crashed, and I lost all my work from the previous day. What kind of technological curse have you put on me? I have never had this much technical difficulty filming a video ever. But anyway, this is what the mixture looks like. Beautiful. Now all that's left is to walk over here, take our half a slice of regular ass brown bread, tear it up, and drop it in the mixture. Alright, I'll cut to when that's done. And here we are. Look at all the volume that half a slice got us. Wow, Eli, I'm starting to think that you didn't actually give us the proper gram measurements to make this recipe. Nope, that's just the power of Coach Greg. Wow, Eli, that was a really good delivery on that joke. Yeah, it's almost like I've done it before. Like it's my second time delivering that joke. Is this how Greg feels when he time travels with HRT? Anyway, I'm supposed to mix all this up with my hands, but as you can see, I get incredibly scared that I'm going to spill everything all over my laptop, so I decide to switch to the opposite end of the counter. Okay, so that's done and tastes absolutely delicious. In fact, around this time, I found myself snacking on bread soaked in the egg white mixture. But now, all we have to do is take half a peach and add it to our bread and egg whites. And then we can get to baking. 
And now here I am dumping that half a peach into the bowl that is way too small for what I am trying to do. Now I go over here and try to kind of mix it in but like I said the bowl is way too small so I have to kind of try and pick up, lift and drop to kind of get this to mix in and uh, that didn't even really work. I ended up spilling a ton of it all over the place. However, that is actually a diet hack because the more you spill all over your countertop and floor, the less you will actually have in the final product, meaning the final product will have less calories. Big brain time. Okay, I am done mixing. As you can see, the whole mixture comes up to past the rim of my bowl. I would definitely need a bigger bowl if I were to make this again, despite the fact that this is literally the biggest bowl I have in my house. Oh well, now what I'm about to do is attempt to pour this mixture into a casserole dish that is about half the size of my bowl. I'm sure that'll go swimmingly. So I first go to move the casserole dish and the bowl onto my countertop before remembering about the massive mess that I had just made. I leave both the dish and the bowl on my sink and go and clean it up. I am glad neither of those fell because that would have been a massive headache that I just really didn't need to deal with at the time. As you can see, I start by trying to pour the mixture into the casserole dish before realizing just how bad of an idea that actually is and going to grab a spoon. So as I start to spoon the mixture into the casserole dish, I realize very, very quickly that there is no way in hell all this bake is going to fit comfortably into that casserole dish. I did not care. I was very determined. I did not want to do this in two batches. I could not find my big glass casserole dish, and I was going to get this bake done for this video. So I am going to cut to when I have finally managed to cram all of the bake into the casserole dish that is way too small for it. Okay, so I kind of managed to fit everything into my casserole dish, and as you can see, much like a stoner on the 20th of April, this is going to be one hell of a bake. Anyway, all that's left now is for me to throw this in the oven and actually bake the thing. And for those of you out there that are running short on time, I figured out an incredible hack because I am the smartest man to have ever walked this earth. Instead of putting it in for the recommended temperature for about an hour, I could just multiply that temperature by 10 and leave it in there for about five minutes. So for any of you that are running short on time, Greg, I know you work 100 hours a week and you need time wherever you can. This is the best way to save yourself time where possible. Also, the next footage will actually have sound, so this is the end of the voiceover. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it. Okay, so the bake is done and I am attempting to one-hand this. I am sure it'll turn out perfectly. Never mind the smoke. Oh, this is, this is such a bad idea. This is such a bad idea. Um, oh man, is this a bad idea. I'm pretty sure there was some spillover. There is definitely some spillover. Great. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to clean that up. What a bad idea this is. I did it! I didn't drop it. You proud of me, guys? Okay, anyway. Um, I'm gonna let this air out a bit. Hopefully not set off the smoke alarm. And then the next time you see me, I'll be cutting into and eating this. Hello everyone, here I am the next day having the bake again for breakfast. Now you might be wondering why am I filming this again? Well, it turns out that all my previous footage uh, of me eating it is either got corrupted or my camera shut off. I'm not entirely sure, I just don't have it. So you're not going to get to see me eat this for the first time. I don't even really think you're going to get to see me eat this. I'm just going to quickly summarize what I thought of the bake when I had it and uh, that'll be the video. So I gave it an overall 7 out of 10, far from the best recipe in the cookbook that Greg said it was, but there are reasons for that. The main reason being, I think I can improve it. Uh, let's get into kind of what I liked about it, and then I'll tell you the problems that I ran into with it. So what I really like is it was really satiating, uh, and that was a big issue for me. I really wondered if I was going to be full, especially compared to how filling the regular anabolic French toast is. Not a problem. I was full. Uh, two, it was actually pretty tasty. Um, in terms of a taste, again, 7 out of 10. The reason why I gave it a 7 out of 10, though, is because mine was runny. And the reason why mine was runny was because I did it wrong, hence the need for improvement. What I did wrong, and this doesn't specify anything in the cookbook, uh, I might add, but I used the wrong sized baking tray or... Um, 
casserole dish. It, uh, the cookbook doesn't specify what kind of casserole dish you need, uh, but the one I had was way too small, so I need to use a bit of a bigger one. You guys saw which one I used. Uh, don't use that one, use a bigger one. And also the bowl I used was too small. So if you guys are going to make this, you guys saw the bowl I had, that was way too small. I got my kitchen incredibly dirty. There was a mess everywhere. So whatever bowl you think you have, get a bigger one. Bigger bowl than last time, bigger um, casserole dish than last time. And the reason why the casserole dish is important is because when you try to pack too much um, bake into the casserole dish, uh, it's going to affect how long you need to cook it. And the heat distribution is not going to be right. So you're going to have some parts that are slightly overcooked, some parts that are slightly undercooked. And that's what happened with mine. It was still really, really tasty but it was runny and some parts were undercooked. Another thing is why it was so runny and so watery was because I used frozen peaches and I did not thaw them first. Again, the cookbook doesn't say whether or not you should or shouldn't thaw them. I would recommend that you thaw your peaches first. That will help get rid of some of the excess moisture and make it so that it is not quite as watery when you cut into it. Now, in terms of flavor, what is the flavor of this versus regular anabolic French toast? And honestly, I really like the flavor of this. There is a difference. It's slight, but there is a difference. The regular anabolic French toast is I just make it and then I put whatever fruits I want on top. But this is kind of, because everything's kind of mixed in together and it, and it cooks together, you get this taste of everything is kind of infused in everything. You get French toast taste when you bite into a peach and you get peach taste when you bite into French toast and it all melts together to make definitely something closer to a bake than real anabolic French toast. And that's really good. I really like that. Um, would I make this again? Yes, but not often. And the reason why is because I have the time to make anabolic French toast every day. I figured out a rhythm for me in the mornings that work well and that I can get fresh, just warm or straight out of the pan anabolic French toast every day. However, um, I would recommend this recipe in particular, or the apple bake if you like apples, to anybody who needs to meal prep. This is a really fast way to meal prep French toast for a week, uh, especially if you only eat the smaller portions. I eat the big portions, so that's you know a, a sixth of the loaf, or of the bake rather. And so that's breakfast for six days. If you do a smaller portion, that is breakfast for 12 days. And so even when you try to meal prep regular anabolic French toast, it takes time. At most, you can fit four French toasts in a pan at a time. And so you either need a big pan, multiple pans, or a griddle here. And even then, it still takes a lot of time. You still have to dip each individual toast, flip it, store it. Here, you can just put it all into your casserole tray. It takes, it does take 50 minutes to make it even filming it was rather quick and it would have been way quicker if I wasn't filming so you just throw everything in the bowl mix it up spray the casserole pan put it all in the casserole pan and you're done in an hour and then you have breakfast for the week so what what I think this works best as is for people who are saying I don't have time to make breakfast in the morning I, I'm just too busy um, and I don't have time to really sit down and just cook all my meals for the week. This, you 15 minutes prep in the oven for an hour, boom, you are done. And I think that is where this recipe really, really shines. And that might be one of the reasons why Greg likes it so much, because he is so busy. It's just such a quick, easy, and delicious recipe. Now, again, seven out of 10 on my version. And I know I gave the whole wrong um, measurements for everything, but trust me, I did follow the cookbook exactly. It's just where I went wrong was I did not thaw my fruit and I, used a smaller casserole dish than I should have. So there's definitely room for improvement there. And the next time I make it, I do have a larger glass casserole dish that I have no idea where it is. But if I'm going to make it again, I would spend the time looking for it, digging it out, finding it. It's just that I needed to get a video filmed and that was the only casserole dish I could find for right now. So the next time I'm going to make this, I'm actually going to put effort in and look for the proper dish. But I would use that and I would thaw my peaches. Uh, and now another key takeaway I want you guys to have from this video. It isn't necessarily how delicious is the recipe, how much do I want to eat this recipe or make this recipe. It's the idea that no matter how stupid simple a recipe is, there are still things that you can screw up and improve upon and things will get better as you make them. Because again, this recipe is very simple. It's like five ingredients with like five steps. One of them is preheat your oven, right? Like, and the other is put it in the oven for X amount of time. Like you really do not have, um, 
to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. However, there are still things that you figure out as you make the dish. Uh, whenever you make something for the first time, when you do anything for the first time, it's not going to be as good as when you make it for the hundredth time. Even me, when I first made Coach Greg's anabolic French toast, I wasn't all that impressed because I didn't do it correctly. I made a few mistakes and as I kept making it, I realized, okay, so this is the heat of the pan that works best for me. Okay, this is how long it takes before I flip it. Okay, I do this, I do that. And as you continue to make it, the flavor will generally get better and better and so will the texture and everything and you will be able to tailor make it to you. That's what I wanna take away from this because again, this is a simple recipe and yet there were still things that I found on my first try that I could improve on. So. That is the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Greg, how you doing? Uh, hope you liked watching. Hope you like watching me mess up one of the easiest recipes you could possibly make. Hope you liked uh, watching the disaster unfold. And I hope you realize now why I call myself the smoothest of smooth brains. But until next video, I'm not dead yet. And if you aren't either, there's always a tomorrow waiting for you. I am going to go eat my breakfast.